Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Are you guys interested in Zen 5? Because by far it seems to be one of the most hyped and anticipated products which is going to release this year. For the desktop incarnation, of course, that would be Granite Ridge on the AM5 platform. Well, there are some very intriguing leaks that have popped up concerning not only core counts of certain SKUs, but also some interesting confirmations concerning the power consumption of these products as well. We're also going to touch on Intel Battle Mage because, well, like Zen 5, some stuff has emerged thanks to some shipping manifests. And we're going to get into all of that plus more after this quick message from the sponsor of today's video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. If you are reasonably familiar with Zen 5's Granite Ridge leaks that have been emerging over the past while, you can skip forward about a minute. But as a quick reminder, they will, of course, be released on the AM5 platform, so there should be forwards and backwards compatibility. And from what we understand, basically, these processors are still going to be 16 cores, 32 threads for the highest end. And naturally, we will also see the Vcash variants launch, most likely, it seems, probably early next year so there's going to be a tangible release delay between the vanilla chips and also the x3d variants pretty much like we've seen with past generations like zen 3 as well as zen 4 with that said these processors are shaping up to be very interesting now the basic um, power limitation does seem to be the same in terms of tdp up to 170 watts which makes a lot of sense for the desktop part there will be some differences for Turin as basically it can go up to 500 watts. But what's quite interesting with these shipping manifest is there seems to be a couple of differences. And let's get into it thanks to some leaks that Momomo on Twitter has managed to discover. So I won't read out the entire serial number here because I will go insane, but 1404-01 is an 8-core 16-thread processor. Of course, it still has SMT2. And it's a Zen 5 Ryzen desktop, 170 watts TDP. And then we have 1290-21, which is 6 cores, 12 threads. Again, um, uh, Granite Ridge Zen 5 desktop, 105 watts. So what is quite intriguing about this is that it seems that AMD are actually increasing the TDP numbers for the eight core chips. If memory serves, it was 105 for the previous generation. Now, what I'll quickly add is that these are most certainly, well, at least very unlikely to be final production silicon chips. It is possible, but it's also possible that they are simply not. Therefore, TDP simply could be incorrect at this stage. But of course, if it is higher, then it is a good chance that we could see higher clock frequencies for the eight core processors. Now, in a couple of days, I'm going to be releasing a new video on Zen 5, where I'm going to be exploring more about the IPC gains that I've been hearing hearing because quite frankly there are a dizzying number of IPC claims that have been floating around so I want to try and make a lot more sense of that but I do suspect that Zen 5 will be absolutely a monstrous architecture indeed and it's going to be very interesting to see what the clock frequencies end up being. Now, I have been a number of different figures that I've been given for the highest end chips, but basically up to a couple of hundred megahertz as a kind of regression. But maybe we could see around six gigahertz for the 16 core variants, which of course would be a clock speed bump. Now, it's very possible, however, that those figures are simply being mixed up. For example, we could be seeing these figures be the F max and so on. So I think AMD will be, 
I think they're going to be onto a real winner with these chips. It'll be very interesting to see how these things scale with different memory configurations, but also to see what Intel are capable of bringing to the fray with the upcoming Arrow Lake processors. Um, the rumor that I've been hearing, and it seems to be, you know, certainly not just myself that's been hearing this, is that there will also be a 32 E core um, variant of Arrow Lake as well. So basically, it's 8 uh, slash 16 for the initial release of Arrow Lake, but then basically later on, they will release a kind of refresh which will go up to 32 cores. And there's possibly that that's going to be coinciding with the release of the Vcache variants of Zen 5, but honestly, let's just say things are a bit uh, unclear there. I. Uh, <laughs> I think Arrow Lake will be a very cool architecture, but honestly, it's the latter Intel processors which are really kind of, uh, let's just say, exciting and tickling me in certain places. Speaking of Intel, though, let's move on to Battle Mage. So this is just going to be a quick one because basically we have uh, Momomo, who again has been uh, diligently going through shipping manifests, and what we have here are basically confirmations of two SKUs that appeared in a roadmap that I actually leaked. Um, I think I don't know early last year, I think, if memory serves. Honestly, it's kind of hard to remember at this point. But basically, uh, we have G10 and G21. There has been a lot of confusion, quite frankly, even for myself at this point, of what exactly is happening with uh, Intel's Battle Mage processors. Essentially, I've heard that there are two different configurations that were considered for the highest end variants. Um, and basically speaking, I heard that one kind of got canned and then the other one was moving forward. But, um, and you can see the specifications based on the last video um, that's popping up. So I won't verbally go through all of this because I just wanna make this a quick kind of update for you all. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see exactly what ends up happening with Battle Mage. It's uh, one of those architectures that obviously won't be going up to the performance of the highest end uh, RTX 40 GPUs, such as the 4090. However, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a bad set of products. Ultimately, of course, as you guys know, it's going to be about the pricing as well as the software and other things that really help make these GPUs good or bad. I will be super interested to see what Intel actually does for its marketing strategy as well. Ultimately, NVIDIA does have, well, let's just say small dominance when it comes to mind share with people. So, I mean, ultimately, I have heard that Celestial is also still on. Um, and Celestial, of course, as you probably know, is going to be the generation after Battle Mage. The real question is just how successful Battle Mage is going to be for Intel. Um, I personally do wish Intel the best. I do want them to be you know, a very competitive force in the industry because I don't think a duopoly is good for anyone, honestly. Um, you know, <laughs> frankly, I would love another competitor in the x86 space. And yes, I know, technically speaking, there kind of is, especially in like China, but you guys know what I mean. I mean, like in the West and like, you know, kind of like a new AMD and new Intel type of thing. Um, that would be absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I guess at this stage, it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be fascinating to see what happens with the next generation of GPUs, obviously RDNA 4. From what I'm hearing, it's not going to launch early this year. It seems like it's going to be the latter part of the year. I've heard Q3, maybe Q4. AMD doesn't seem to be in a rush, which honestly makes sense because the um, uh, 7900 GRE, uh, GRE as I like to call it for the sake of my sanity, has only recently been launched in certain regions and obviously... RDNA 4 does seem to be particularly performant. We've seen that for the ray tracing anyway, um, based on what we've seen with the PlayStation 5 Pro leaks, assuming, of course, that that is transferable to the RDNA 4 architecture. Um, it seems like it's going to be much closer to an equivalent NVIDIA performance, um, current NVIDIA performance for ray tracing. But of course, RTX 50 will also be releasing, and I suspect there's going to be a plethora of updates there. Oh, also, just a small little thing. Um, regarding the RTX 50 release date, this is a really quick update, because I've had a couple of people asking me um, regarding a story I covered... I don't know, maybe a week, two weeks ago. Uh, everything seems to be bloody blending together in my noggin at this point. But basically, there was um, a story going around that RTX 40 um, is going to start to be diminishing in terms of supply because NVIDIA are basically winding down production. have told AIBs, allegedly, 
and this is all due to basically RTX 50 of course which with those rumors allegedly it's going to start to um, you know be introduced this year now I've spoken to a couple of sources and quite frankly things have been clear as mud um, one source told me who's spoken to their AIB contacts that they've not heard anything about that they're going to keep their ear to the ground but at this stage they've not heard anything and they think that RTX 50 isn't going to be till next year so maybe the first half of next year seems to be the release date however another really good source told me the exact opposite so that's always helpful they told me that they think rtx 50 is definitely going to be this year and they believe that rtx 40 supply is going to start to diminish pretty soon for the higher end parts so obviously as everyone knows when it comes to a new gpu release from for example nvidia you will see the highest end parts released first like the 80 and 90 class SKUs, and then eventually it's going to start trickling down so you know the 60s and whatever else so it basically means from what they've heard anyway that rtx 4090s for example will start to diminish in their you know well basically they're just going to have their supply uh, start to reduce and then um it'll obviously be in preparation for rtx 50. i honestly don't know what to tell you i'm giving you both sides of things i hate you know when that happens but it just is what it is so you can kind of let me know what you think in the comments below do you think rtx 50 is going to release this year or next year um i kind of hope it's next year honestly um because this year is always going to, already going to be bloody expensive enough anyway let me know your thoughts and opinions Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.